Did you audition for Godspell? I did. How many times? Well, I auditioned and then got the call back and then I got it. It was like the, the March 25th, 1972. Who did you audition for? Well, I auditioned for Stephen Schwartz, who had written Godspell and would later go on to write everything else, including Wicked, etc. And a man named John Michael Tebelak, who wrote the play. Uh, and Howie Sponseller, who's the director. Were you nervous? You know, I, 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 I guess it was, I was still in university. I, had, I was at McMaster University and had decided I would take a year off inspired by Eugene Levy, who said, you, I think you really owe it to yourself to, you love doing plays, you love doing theater at McMaster. What you take, oh, what did you take at McMaster? Well, there was no theater credit. So you were doing physics? You were doing, you were doing all on your own dime. Right. I was in, uh, went into pre-meds and switched to social work, because it dawned on me I wasn't interested in science. I just liked the idea of being a doctor. And that's not enough. Do you, you act know. a doctor? I admire Richard Chamberlain's <laughs> work, but not, not, you know. And so um, I took, I'd done four years at Mac, and then I took a year off. And I was, it was literally going to be a year. I, I, I literally, my plan was to start in September, because I was sc only school year oriented. Start in September, and, and by May, if I hadn't worked at all, I'd say, well, now I can look in the mirror at 50 and say, what if you try being an actor? And I could say, oh, that's right, you did. Remember, and you, no one hired you? Even though now, when I think 10 months is not much. But that was my plan. However, the Godspell editions was in March. So I'd made that decision, but now I was still at Mac, finishing my fourth year. And, and this show, Godspell, which was the hippest thing imaginable, uh, it had just opened in New York, and this was the first time they were doing a new company. And... Uh, I'm wrong. I, my first edition was probably, I don't know, the 18th of March or something, and I just auditioned for Howie Sponsor, the director. Now there were the callbacks at the Masonic Temple in Toronto. About 200 people called back and 400 people in the back supporting them. It was like an episode of American Idol. And throughout the whole day, they kept whittling the people down. And by the end of the day, they were uh, Stephen Schwartz, who by that time was only 25, by the way, who had written Godspell. Um, he was really in a creative moment. Like, for example, Paul Schaefer, who was taking a year sabbatical from law school, and near the end of that sabbatical, and had to go back to law school soon, came in and played for a friend of his, Avril Chown, who would get the show. But he also, so Stephen Schwartz said, who's that guy pounding the piano like I've never heard in my life? Stephen that day hated the rehearsal pianist playing for people, didn't think he knew rock and roll, fired him, said to Paul, I will make you musical director if you will take over from this so I can fire him. So that was kind of the wow. uh, level. And so he whittled it down to 10 people. And in that group was Gilda Radner, who had never worked in, in professionally, Andrea Martin, Martin Short, Eugene Levy, Jane wow. Eastwood, Victor Garber. Yeah. And were you nervous? Were you hopeful? Were you, this is the answer to my life? Or this it is was all gig? surreal. It was surreal. And I remember it was done to, between me and another guy. Who? I can't remember. And Schwartz. He had no life, no career. Well, we were both, I was 21 years old. And we were both, and I'm sure he was. And Stephen Schwartz said, I think we'll go with Martin. No. Yeah. It was that bit bizarre. Luck. Luck? No. I th well, here's the luck. What they were looking for, what Stephen Schwartz was looking for, is talented people with no real polish. If you were too slick, you weren't getting in. So he wanted more raw talent because he wanted it to be, we were clowns, we were, he didn't want the slick, thank you, he didn't want that. So there's luck in that because I had no polish. Um, and do you think if you hadn't got that part, that the rest of it might not have happened the way it did? It's hard to say. I would say that that was a huge successful show. Ran for a year, sold out the Royal, Royal Alex and moved to the Playhouse Theater. We would be written about in the Toronto Sun, George Anthony. We were the hip. It was like being 
part of the cast of SNL the first couple of years, but pre-SNL. It was another big mark on the wall. Right, and so that got you in the door if you were asked to audition for something. If the, I mean, I remember the, the film The Last Detail was um, shot in Toronto that year with Jack Nicholson. And all the Godspell people went in addition. And the director of that film came and saw Godspell, Hal Ashby, and with, the, with his casting director. And I was very close to getting uh, the uh, Randy Quaid role. If they, if they were going to go with a big hulking guy or a little guy. Well, no, I would not have gotten that close to getting that part had I indeed not mm -hmm. been in Godspell. So again, it's like saying if, if you get hired, if, if Lorne Michaels is allowed to do Saturday Night Live and he hires John Belushi and Gilda Radner and Danny Aykroyd, etc., and they're successful in that, from that, John Belushi gets to have a killer role in Animal House and become a star. So it is domino in that respect. That's the luck part.